The neon-streaked streets of Zeta Station hummed with the usual cacophony of alien life. Beings of all shapes, sizes, and consistencies jostled for space in the bustling spaceport. Amid the chaos, a group of hulking green aliens stood out, their boisterous laughter echoing off the metallic walls. Another successful raid, boys, bellowed Kraz, the leader of the motley crew. His massive frame dwarfed the other patrons as he shouldered his way to the bar. Barkeep, a round of your finest nebula nectar for my crew. The bartender, a gelatinous blob with multiple eye stalks, oozed over to serve them. As the alien poured iridescent liquid into their glasses, Daz, the youngest of the crew, couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that had plagued him since they'd left Earth. You do what's eating you, runt? Kraz's gravelly voice snapped Daz out of his thoughts. You should be celebrating. We just pulled off the heist of the century. Daz took a long swig of his drink, the burning sensation in his throat a welcome distraction. It's nothing, boss. Just... Something about that human girl we nabbed. The way she looked at me, Kraz roared with laughter, slamming his meaty fist on the bar. D don't tell me you're going soft over some primitive ape. They're barely sentient for Zorb's sake. The rest of the crew joined in the laughter, but Das couldn't bring himself to smile. He remembered the fierce intensity in the girl's eyes as they dragged her onto their ship. She hadn't screamed or begged like the others. Instead, she'd fix Das with a stare that seemed to pierce right through him. Who did they're coming for you? She'd said, her voice eerily calm. The ghosts, and when they find you, you'll wish you'd never heard of Earth. Das shuddered at the memory. Boss, what if... Enough, Kraz growled, his good mood evaporating. We came here to celebrate, not listen to your sniveling. Now drink up and enjoy the spoils of our victory. As if on cue, a holographic display flickered to life above the bar, showing footage of their raid on Earth. Das watched with growing unease as images of burning cities and fleeing humans flashed across the screen. Their ship, the Stellar Reaver, loomed over a devastated New York, its tractor beams pulling up skyscrapers whole. Now that's what I call a smash and grab, hooted Grok the crew's demolitions expert. His tentacles waved excitedly as he relived the destruction. Das tried to focus on the images of their triumph, but his eyes kept drifting to the edges of the frame. There, barely visible in the chaos, he thought he saw flickers of movement, dark shapes that seemed to fade in and out of existence, always just out of focus. Hey, Das! Kraz's voice boomed again. Uh, tell everyone about that fancy earth trinket you picked up. What do you call it? A watch. Grateful for the distraction, Das pulled the device from his pocket. It was a sleek, silver thing with a face of numbers and rotating hands. It's a primitive timekeeping device, he explained, his scientist's curiosity momentarily overriding his anxiety. The humans use it to... His words died in his throat as he looked at the watch face. The hands were spinning wildly, whirling faster and faster until they became a blur. As Das stared in disbelief, a single word appeared where the numbers had been. Soon, the watch slipped from Das's trembling fingers, clattering to the floor. The sound seemed to echo unnaturally in the suddenly quiet bar. What's the matter, runt? Kraz sneered. Did your little toy scare you? But Das wasn't listening. His eyes darted around the room, searching for what he didn't know, but the sense of impending doom was overwhelming. We need to leave, he whispered. Now, Kraz's eyes narrowed dangerously. What did you say? Das swallowed hard, forcing himself to meet his captain's gaze. I said we need to leave. Something's wrong. The human girl, she is safely locked away in our ship's brig. Kraz interrupted. Along with all the other valuable specimens we collected, now sit down and shut up before I decide you're more trouble than you're worth. Das sank back onto his stool, his three hearts racing. He tried to focus on his drink, on the sounds of the bar, on anything but the creeping dread that threatened to consume him. But no matter where he looked, he saw shadows moving at the edge of his vision, and then he heard it. A whisper so faint he might have imagined it. We're here. 
Das whirled around, nearly falling off his stool. Did you hear that? he asked, his voice cracking. Grok blinked at him with all eight eyes. Hear what? The only thing I hear is you interrupting our good time. But I... Das began, then froze as he caught sight of the bar's entrance. The human girl stood there, her eyes locked on Das, but that was impossible. She was supposed to be locked away on their ship, light years from here. As Das watched in horror, a dark mist seemed to coalesce around her, forming into the shapes of five tall, black-clad figures. The ghosts, Das breathed. They're here. Kraz spun around, his hand going to his weapon. What in the name of... The bar erupted into chaos. Patrons screamed and scattered as the five figures moved with impossible speed. Das could barely track their movements as they tore through the room, heading straight for his crew. Grok's tentacles flailed wildly as he tried to grab one of the attackers, but his limbs passed right through the black-clad figure as if it were made of smoke. A moment later, Grok collapsed, a thin red line appearing across his throat. Kraz roared in fury, unleashing a barrage of plasma fire from his massive gun. The energy bolt sizzled through the air, leaving scorch marks on the walls, but never touching their targets. The black-clad figures seemed to flow around the attacks like water. Da stumbled backward, his back pressed against the bar. He watched in helpless terror as his crewmates fell one by one, their alien physiology no match for the precision and speed of their attackers. And then it was over. The bar fell silent, broken only by the sound of Das's ragged breathing. He found himself face to face with the leader of the attackers, a tall human male with graying hair and a livid scar running down one side of his face. The human's eyes were cold and hard as he regarded Das. When he spoke, his voice was low and filled with barely contained rage. You made a mistake, he said, each word dripping with menace. You came to our world. You took our people. You thought we were weak, helpless, but you were wrong. Das trembled, unable to look away from those terrifying eyes. Who, what are you? The human's lips curled into a humorless smile. We're the ghosts, the ones you never see coming until it's too late. And we're here to teach you and your kind a lesson. He leaned in close, his breath hot on Das's face. Spread the word, alien. Tell everyone you meet. Earth is off limits. We are not your prey. We are not your victims. We are your worst nightmare. Das nodded frantically, willing to agree to anything if it meant he'd be allowed to live. The human stepped back, gesturing to his team. Let's go. Our work here is done. As quickly as they had appeared, the black-clad figures melted back into the shadows. Das blinked, and they were gone, leaving no trace of their presence except for the bodies of his fallen comrades. Das slumped to the floor, his mind reeling. How had they found them so quickly? How had they moved like that, as if the laws of physics didn't apply? And most importantly, what would he do now? As the sounds of approaching security forces grew louder, Das made a decision. He would do exactly as the human had said. He would spread the word, far and wide across the galaxy. Earth was not to be trifled with. Humans were not the easy prey they had believed. And the ghosts, the ghosts were always watching, waiting to strike. Das shuddered, knowing that his life would never be the same. The age of easy plunder was over, a new era had begun, and humanity had just announced its arrival on the galactic stage in the most terrifying way possible. Das stumbled out of the bar, his legs shaking beneath him. The cacophony of alarms and shouts faded into the background as he wrestled with the impossible events he'd just witnessed. He had to get off this station, had to warn, You there! Stop! A gruff voice cut through Das's panic. He turned to see a pair of Zeta Station security officers approaching, their tentacles writhing with agitation. Das raised his hand slowly, trying to appear as non-threatening as possible. Officers, I can explain, he began, but his words were cut short by a sharp pain in his side. He looked down to see a dart protruding from his thick hide. The world began to swim, and Das felt his consciousness slipping away. Take him in for questioning, was the last thing he heard before darkness claimed him. Das awoke with a start, his head pounding. 
He found himself in a stark interrogation room, his limbs restrained by energy cuffs. Across from him sat a stern-faced Zarlaxian, its crystalline form glittering under the harsh lights. I am Inspector Zix, the Zarlaxian said, its voice a grating screech. You will tell me everything that happened in that bar. Das swallowed hard, his throat dry. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Zix's facets shifted, a Zarlaxian expression of irritation. E try me. We have footage of you and your crew entering the bar. Thirty minutes later, everyone but you is dead. Explain. So Das told them everything. The raid on Earth, the human girl's warning, the terrifying attack by the ghosts. As he spoke, he could see the disbelief growing in Zix's crystalline structure. Impossible, Zix screeched when Das had finished. No species could do what you've described, especially not humans. They're a backwater race, barely out of their own solar system. Das leaned forward, his eyes wide. That's what we thought too, but we were wrong, terribly wrong. Zix was silent for a long moment, its facets shifting rapidly as it processed the information. Finally, it spoke. If what you're saying is true, this could change everything. The balance of power in the galaxy. A loud explosion rocked the station, cutting off Zix's words. Alarms blared as the lights flickered and died, plunging the room into darkness. Das felt his restraints deactivate, and he stumbled to his feet. What's happening? he cried out, but there was no answer. In the dim emergency lighting, he could see that Zix had disappeared. Das fumbled his way to the door, which slid open at his touch. The corridor beyond was chaos, with beings of all species running in panic. Through the station's viewport, Das could see flashes of weapons fire in space. A nearby info screen crackled to life, showing a grainy image of a sleek, black ship unlike anything Das had ever seen. Its hull seemed to absorb light, making it hard to focus on. A voice, distorted but unmistakably human, boomed through the station's speakers. Attention, citizens of Zeta Station, we are here for the alien known as Das. Surrender him immediately, or face the consequences. Das felt his heart skip a beat. They had followed him here. But how? And why did they want him alive? Before he could process this new development, a hand grabbed his shoulder. Das spun around, coming face to face with a hooded figure. For a moment, he thought it was one of the ghosts, but then the figure pushed back its hood, revealing, You! Das gasped. It was the human girl they had captured on Earth. She put a finger to her lips, motioning for silence. If you want to live, come with me now, she whispered. Das hesitated. Every instinct screamed at him to run, but something in the girl's eyes made him pause. There was no hatred there, no desire for revenge, only a grim determination. Why should I trust you? he asked. The girl's lips curved into a small smile. D because right now, I'm the only friend you've got in the galaxy. Another explosion rocked the station. Das made his decision. Lead the way. They raced through the chaotic corridors, the girl moving with a surety that suggested intimate knowledge of the station's layout. Das struggled to keep up, his bulky form ill-suited for sprinting. How did you escape? He panted as they ran. How did you get here? Later, the girl replied tersely. Right now, we need to focus on not dying. They rounded a corner and came face to face with a squad of station security. The officers raised their weapons, but before they could fire, the girl made a sharp gesture. A wave of invisible force slammed into the security team, sending them flying. Das gaped at her. How did you... I said later, she snapped, grabbing his arm and pulling him along. They finally reached a small docking bay. Inside was a ship Das had never seen before. It was tiny barely large enough for two passengers, and looked more like a silver teardrop than any conventional spacecraft. Get in, the girl ordered, already climbing into the pilot's seat. Das squeezed his bulk into the passenger compartment, feeling claustrophobic. Where are we going? The girl's hands danced over the controls, and the ship hummed to life. Somewhere safe. Somewhere we can talk. The docking bay doors opened. 
and their little ship shot out into space. Das caught a glimpse of the massive black ship that had been threatening the station. It hung in space like a hole in reality, weapons blazing. But then stars blurred around them, and Das felt the familiar lurch of faster-than-light travel. They had escaped. As the adrenaline of their flight faded, Das found himself studying the human girl. She couldn't have been more than twenty Earth years old, but there was a hardness in her eyes that spoke of experiences beyond her years. Who are you? he asked finally. What do you want with me? The girl was quiet for a long moment, her eyes fixed on the swirling vortex of FTL travel. When she spoke, her voice was soft but firm. My name is Sarah Connor, she said, and I'm here to save your life and maybe the entire galaxy in the process. Daz blinked in confusion. Save my life, but your people, the ghosts, they killed my crew. They were hunting me. Sarah shook her head. Those weren't my people, at least not exactly. She sighed heavily. It's complicated, and you're probably not going to believe half of what I tell you. But the short version is this. I'm from the future. A future where your raid on Earth set off a chain of events that led to galactic war. Das felt his head spinning. Time travel. Galactic war. It was too much to process. But how? Why? The attack on your crew at the bar, Sarah continued. That was just the beginning. Humanity's response to your raid escalates. We develop technologies that terrify the rest of the galaxy. Alliances form. Lines are drawn, and in the end, trillions die. She turned to face Das, her eyes burning with intensity. I was sent back to prevent that future, to stop the war before it starts, and you, Das, are the key to all of it. Das slumped in his seat, overwhelmed. Me? But I'm nobody, just a low-ranking crew member on a pirate ship. Sarah's expression softened slightly. Sometimes the smallest actions have the biggest consequences. Your choices in the coming days will shape the fate of entire civilizations. Das felt the weight of her words settling on him like a physical burden. What do I need to do? First, Sarah said, a hint of a smile touching her lips. You need to tell me everything you know about your people's technology, particularly your faster-than-light drives. Das frowned. Why? What does that have to do with preventing a war? Sarah's smile grew, tinged with a sadness Das couldn't quite understand. Because, my friend, we're about to embark on a heist of our own, one that will make your raid on Earth look like petty theft. As their tiny ship hurtled through the depths of space, Das found himself re-evaluating everything he thought he knew about humans, about the galaxy, and about his own place in the grand scheme of things. Whatever came next, he realized nothing would ever be the same again. The silver teardrop ship dropped out of FTL, emerging in a system Das didn't recognize. A gas giant loomed before them, its swirling storms a canvas of oranges and reds. As Sarah piloted them towards one of the planet's moons, Das broke the silence that had fallen between them. You still haven't explained why those ghosts... Attacked my crew if they weren't your people. Sarah's hands tightened on the controls. They're a faction from my time. Radicals who believe the only way to prevent the war is to eradicate all alien life that poses a threat to Earth. She glanced at Das. They're wrong, of course. That kind of xenophobia is what leads to war in the first place. Das felt a chill run down his spine. And the human leading them. The one with the scar. Colonel Stryker. Sarah spat the name like a curse. In my timeline, he becomes one of Earth's most decorated war heroes and one of its greatest monsters. Their ship entered the moon's thin atmosphere, descending towards a crater-pocked landscape. As they neared the surface, a holographic camouflage flickered and disappeared, revealing a hidden base nestled in a deep canyon. Ude, welcome to Haven. Sarah said, as she expertly guided their ship into a concealed hangar, one of the last safe places in the galaxy, or it will be, about two hundred years from now. Darcy's head was spinning as they disembarked. 
The hangar was a hive of activity, filled with beings from dozens of species, all working together with a sense of urgent purpose. Many of them paused to stare at Das as Sarah led him deeper into the base. I don't understand, Das said, struggling to take it all in. If you're from the future, how is this base here now? Sarah smiled grimly. Let's just say time travel technology has come a long way by my era. This base exists in a sort of temporal bubble, outside the normal flow of time. It allows us to coordinate our efforts across multiple time periods. They entered a large, circular room, dominated by a holographic display of the galaxy. A group of beings stood around it, arguing in hushed tones. They fell silent as Sarah and Das approached. A tall, willowy alien with iridescent skin stepped forward. Sarah, it said, its voice melodious. We were growing concerned. I see your mission was a success, Sarah nodded. Barely, Stryker's team nearly got to him first. She turned to Das. Adas, this is Zana, our chief strategist and the last surviving member of the Luminari Council. Das's eyes widened. The Luminari were legendary, an ancient race said to have seeded life throughout the galaxy. Most believed they had gone extinct millennia ago. Zana regarded Das with eyes that seemed to hold the wisdom of eons. Young one, I know you must have many questions, but time, ironically, is short. We need your help, Das swallowed hard. My help, but I'm just a, a key player in events that will shape the galaxy for centuries to come, Zarna interrupted gently. Your actions, both past and future, are pivotal. Sarah stepped up to the holographic display, zooming in on a sector of space Das recognized. This is where your people's main shipyard is located, correct? Das nodded warily. Now, yes, but how did you... In my timeline, this shipyard becomes the staging ground for the first major alien assault on Earth, Sarah explained. The technology your people develop there gives them a significant advantage in the early stages of the war. Zana's luminescent skin pulsed with soft light. We believe that if we can prevent this technology from being developed, we can avert the war altogether, or at least delay it long enough to foster better understanding between species, Das felt a growing sense of unease. What exactly are you planning? Sarah's eyes met his, filled with a mix of determination and regret. We're going to destroy the shipyard, Das, and you're going to help us do it. Das recoiled in shock. Destroy it, but there are thousands of my people there. Civilians, families, which is why we need your help, Sarah said urgently. You know the layout, the security systems. With your knowledge, we can infiltrate the shipyard and sabotage it with minimal loss of life. Das shook his head, backing away. No, no, I won't help you murder my own people. Zana raised a hand, its skin shimmering with calming patterns. Please, understand, if we do not act, billions will die in the war to come. We seek to save lives, not take them, by committing an act of terrorism. Das shot back. Sarah's expression hardened. Sometimes we have to do terrible things to prevent even worse outcomes. I've seen the future, Das. I've walked through the ruins of worlds burned to ash. I've seen entire species wiped out in the blink of an eye. She stepped closer, her voice dropping to a near whisper. And I've seen what becomes of your people, used as cannon fodder by other races, seen as expendable because of your reputation as pirates and marauders. In the end, there's nothing left of your civilization but scattered refugees and tales of past glories. Das felt as if the ground was shifting beneath his feet. Everything he'd believed about his people's strength, their invincibility, was crumbling. There has to be another way, he said weakly. Zana moved to a console, bringing up a new display. We've run countless simulations, examined millions of possible futures. This plan gives us the highest chance of averting war while minimizing loss of life. Das stared at the swirling probabilities and timelines on the screen, his scientific mind grappling with the implications. Even if I believed you, even if I agreed to help, how could we possibly infiltrate the most secure facility in my people's territory? Sarah's lips curved into a grim smile. That's where the heist comes in. We're not going in as attackers. We're going in as you. 
Das blinked in confusion. What? Think about it, Sarah pressed on. You're the sole survivor of a successful raid on Earth, a raid that was interrupted by a mysterious and terrifying new human weapon. You barely escaped with your life, and now you've returned to warn your people of the threat. Understanding dawned on Daz. You want me to use the attack in the bar as a cover story? Zana nodded approvingly. Precisely. You'll be hailed as a hero for bringing this intelligence to your leaders. It will grant you access to the highest levels of the shipyard. And once we're inside, Sarah continued, we can plant our sabotage devices at key points. The shipyard will be crippled, but the loss of life will be minimal. Das felt torn. On one hand, the idea of betraying his people revolted him. On the other, if what Sarah and Zarna said was true, this act could save billions of lives, including, potentially, those of his own species. I, I need time to think, he said finally. Sarah opened her mouth to argue, but Zarna held up a hand. Of course, this is not a decision to be made lightly, but know that time is not on our side. The longer we wait, the closer we come to the point of no return. Das nodded numbly, his mind reeling. As Sarah led him to a small room where he could rest and contemplate, he found himself longing for the simplicity of his old life. Raiding, drinking, celebrating their victories. How had he gone from that to holding the fate of the galaxy in his hands? As the door closed behind him, Das sank onto a bed that was clearly not designed for his species physiology. He stared at his hands, remembering the feeling of the Earth Girl's intense gaze back on his ship. Had some part of him known, even then, that everything was about to change? Outside his room, he could hear the muffled sounds of the base's activity, beings from across time and space, all working together to prevent a war that, from their perspective, had already happened. Dace closed his eyes, trying to make sense of it all. As he drifted into an uneasy sleep, one thought kept circling in his mind. Whatever he decided, the simple life he'd known was gone forever. One way or another, he was now part of something far larger than himself, and the galaxy would never be the same. Das awoke with a start, his heart's racing. In his dreams, he'd seen his homeworld burning, heard the screams of billions. He sat up, rubbing his eyes, and found Sarah watching him from the doorway. Bad dreams, she asked, her voice softer than he'd heard it before. Das nodded. How long was I asleep? About six hours. Sarah entered the room, carrying a tray of food. I thought you might be hungry. Das accepted the tray gratefully, studying the strange assortment of alien foods. As he ate, Sarah settled into a chair across from him. Have you made a decision? she asked after a while. Das set down the tray, his appetite suddenly gone. I'm not sure I can do what you're asking. It feels like betraying everything I've ever known. Sarah leaned forward, her eyes intense. I understand. Believe me, I do. But sometimes the right choice is also the hardest one. How can you be so sure this is the right choice? Das countered. You're talking about altering the course of history. How can you know the consequences won't be even worse? Sarah was quiet for a moment her gaze distant. When I was younger, not much older than I appear now, I was thrust into a similar situation. I learned that my unborn son would one day become a key figure in a war against machines. I was given the choice to try and prevent that future. She looked back at Das, her eyes haunted. I've spent my entire life fighting against one apocalypse or another. I've made choices that have kept me up at night, choices that have cost lives. But I've also seen the consequences of inaction. Das absorbed her words, feeling the weight of them. And you believe this plan will work? I believe it's our best shot, Sarah replied. But it only works if you're with us. We need your insider knowledge, your credibility with your people. Das stood up, pacing the small room. Even if I agree, how can we be sure your plan will succeed? Security at the shipyard is incredibly tight. A small smile tugged at Sarah's lips. That's where the rest of our team comes in. Come on, I'll introduce you. She led Das out of the room and down a series of corridors. They entered a large workshop area filled with strange devices and holograms. 
Three figures turned to face them as they entered. Das, meet the team, Sarah said. Jay, this is Kira, our tech expert. A lithe feline alien nodded at Das, her fur shimmering with bioluminescent patterns. Charmed, she purred, her voice carrying a hint of amusement. Grax, our muscle and demolition specialist, a hulking being that seemed to be made of living stone, rumbled a greeting, pebbles cascading from its shoulders as it moved. And finally, Whisper, our infiltration expert. Das blinked, seeing no one else in the room. Then to his shock, a shimmering outline coalesced into a humanoid form. The being seemed to be composed of shifting shadows, its features indistinct. A pleasure, Whisper said, its voice a barely audible whisper. Das gaped at the assembled team. How? Where did you find these people? Sarah grinned. Let's just say we've got connections throughout time and space. Each of them has a stake in preventing the war, and each of them is the best at what they do. Kira slinked forward, her tail swishing. We've been analyzing the data on your people's shipyard, impressive security, but nothing we can't handle. With your help, of course. Das felt overwhelmed. This was all moving so fast. What exactly is the plan? Sarah nodded to Kira, who brought up a detailed hologram of the shipyard. As we discussed. You'll enter as yourself, the sole survivor of the Earth Raid. Whisper will accompany you, invisible, to gather intel and disable key security systems. The hologram zoomed in on specific areas of the shipyard. Once inside, you'll need to get us access to these three points. The main reactor, the prototype weapons lab, and the central computer core. Grax rumbled. I'll handle the reactor. One will place charge, and it'll look like a catastrophic malfunction. I'll take the weapons lab, Kira added. Their new FTL technology is the real threat. I can corrupt their data and set their research back years. And I'll handle the computer core, Whisper's voice drifted from the shadows. D a few tweaks to their navigation systems, and their entire fleet will be flying blind. Das studied the hologram, his technical mind already spotting potential issues. The reactor is deep in a restricted area. How will Grax get access? Sarah smiled. That's where you come in. Your story of the Earth Raid will get you an audience with the shipyard's commander. While you're distracting them, you can use your clearance to get Grax where he needs to go. Das frowned. And what about you? What's your role in all this? Sarah's expression hardened. I'm your exit strategy. Once the sabotage is complete, things are going to get chaotic. My job is to make sure we all get out alive. Das took a deep breath, his mind racing. It was a bold plan, audacious even. If it worked, they could cripple his people's war-making capabilities without significant loss of life. But if they failed, what happens if we're caught? He asked. The room fell silent. Finally. Whisper spoke, its voice carrying a hint of sadness. Then we die, and the war comes just as it did before. Das looked at each member of the team, seeing the determination in their eyes, or, in Whisper's case, sensing it. These beings from across the galaxy, from different times and cultures, were willing to risk everything to prevent a war that hadn't even started yet, and they needed him to make it happen. Das squared his shoulders, making his decision. All right, he said. I'm in, but we do this my way. No unnecessary risks, no casualties if we can avoid it. Agreed, Sarah nodded, relief evident on her face. Agreed. We're not here to start a war. We're here to prevent one. Kira's tail swished excitedly. Excellent. Now, let's talk details. Das... We need to know everything about your people's protocols, their security systems, their... As the team huddled around the hologram, discussing plans and contingencies, Das felt a strange mix of emotions. Fear, certainly. Guilt at the thought of betraying his people. But also, surprisingly, a sense of purpose he'd never felt before. For the first time in his life, Das was part of something bigger than himself, something that could shape the future of the entire galaxy. 
As the planning session stretched on, Das found himself contributing more and more. His knowledge of the shipyard systems, combined with the specialized skills of his new teammates, was turning their audacious plan into something that might actually work. Hours passed, and finally, Sarah called for a break. As the others dispersed to make their final preparations, she pulled Das aside. Are you sure about this? she asked quietly. Once we start, there's no turning back. Das looked at her, seeing the weight of responsibility in her eyes. He thought of his former crew, of the life he'd left behind. Then he thought of the billions of lives at stake, of the future Sarah had described. I'm sure, he said, surprising himself with the firmness in his voice. Whatever happens, we're in this together now. Sarah smiled, a genuine warmth in her expression. Together, she agreed. As they rejoined the others, Das felt a shift within himself. He was no longer just a low-ranking crew member on a pirate ship. He was now a key player in a mission to save the galaxy. And for better or worse, their daring heist was about to begin. The sleek, unmarked shuttle cut through the void of space, its stealth systems rendering it nearly invisible to sensors. Inside, Das sat rigid in his seat, his large fingers tapping nervously on the armrest. Beside him, Sarah piloted the craft with steady hands, her eyes fixed on the looming shape of the shipyard growing larger in the viewscreen. Remember, Sarah said, her voice low and intense, once we're inside, stick to the plan. No matter what happens, no matter what you see or hear, stay in character. The success of the mission depends on it. Das nodded, swallowing hard. I understand, I won't let you down. In the rear of the shuttle, the rest of the team made their final preparations. Kira was adjusting her hollow disguise, which would make her appear as one of Das's species. Grax sat motionless, his rocky form barely fitting in the confined space. Whisper was somewhere. Das could never be quite sure where the shadowy being was at any given moment. Approaching the outer security perimeter, Sarah announced. Das, you're up. Das leaned forward activating the comm system. He took a deep breath, then spoke in his native language, his voice tinged with carefully rehearsed panic and exhaustion. Attention, shipyard control. This is Das, crew member of the Stellar Reaver. Requesting emergency docking and immediate audience with command, I have critical intelligence about a new Earth weapon. There was a tense moment of silence. Then a gruff voice responded, Verify your identity and clearance, Das of the Stellar Reaver. Das rattled off his identification codes, silently thanking Sarah for insisting he memorize them perfectly. Another pause. Then, identity confirmed. You are cleared for emergency docking in Bay 17. Security teams will escort you to command. Welcome home, Das. As Sarah skillfully guided their shuttle into the massive docking bay, Das felt a twinge of guilt. He was about to betray everything and everyone he'd ever known. But then he remembered Sarah's words, the visions of a galaxy torn apart by war. He steeled himself. There was no turning back now. The shuttle touched down with a soft thud. Das stood, straightening his clothing and trying to look appropriately haggard and shell-shocked. Sarah caught his eye, giving him a small nod of encouragement. We'll be right behind you, she whispered. Good luck. Das stepped out of the shuttle, blinking in the harsh lights of the docking bay. A squad of armed security officers approached, their weapons lowered but ready. Das! the lead officer asked. When Das nodded, the officer continued. Follow us. Command is eager to hear your report. As they marched through the bustling corridors of the shipyard, Daz marveled at how normal everything seemed. Technicians and officers went about their business, unaware that their entire world was about to be turned upside down. He felt Whisper's unseen presence beside him, knew that the infiltration expert was already beginning its work. They entered a large, circular room, dominated by holographic displays of ship designs and star charts. A group of high-ranking officers turned as Das entered, their expressions a mix of curiosity and concern. Das of the Stellar Reaver, a stern-looking commander said, stepping forward. We received word of your ship's successful raid on Earth, 
but then all communication ceased. What happened? Where is the rest of your crew? Das took a shaky breath, launching into the story they had so carefully crafted. He told them of the raid, of their initial success and the valuable resources and specimens they had acquired. Then, his voice dropping to a horrified whisper, he described the attack in the bar. They came out of nowhere, he said, letting real fear creep into his voice as he remembered the terrifying efficiency of the ghosts. They moved like smoke, our weapons useless against them. They slaughtered everyone, everyone but me. The officers exchanged worried glances. The commander leaned forward, his eyes intense. And you're certain these were humans, not some other species? Das nodded emphatically. Humans, yes, but like no humans we've ever encountered. They had abilities, technology beyond anything we've seen. Commander, I fear we've gravely underestimated the Earth threat. The room erupted into heated discussion. Daz caught snippets of conversation, talks of increased militarization, of preemptive strikes. His heart sank. This was exactly the kind of reaction Sarah had warned about, the first steps toward the devastating war they were trying to prevent. We need to analyze every scrap of data from your ship's computers, the commander said turning back to Das, and we'll need a full debriefing, every detail you can remember about these enhanced humans. Das nodded, seizing the opportunity. Of course, Commander, I'll assist in any way I can. But first, might I be allowed to visit the memorial wall, to, to pay my respects to my fallen crewmates? The Commander's stern expression softened slightly. Of course, security will escort you, but make it quick. We have much to discuss. As Das was led away, he caught a glimpse of Kira, disguised as one of his people, slipping into a restricted area. The plan was in motion. Now he just had to keep the command staff distracted long enough for his teammates to complete their sabotage. The memorial wall was a vast screen, displaying the names and images of fallen crew members. Das stood before it, pretending to mourn, while in reality... He was listening intently to the nearly sub-audible whispers of Whisper providing updates. Central Computer Core accessed. The shadowy being breathed. Initiating data corruption and navigation system alterations. Kira has reached the weapons lab. Grax is en route to the reactor. Das allowed himself a small sigh of relief. So far, everything was going according to plan, but the hardest part was yet to come. He made a show of composing himself, then turned to his security escort. I'm ready to return to command now, he said solemnly. As they walked back, alarms suddenly blared throughout the station. Das's hearts raced, but he forced himself to appear confused and concerned. What's happening? he asked his escort. The security officer frowned, touching his communication device. Some kind of malfunction in the weapons lab. Nothing to worry about, I'm sure. Das nodded, silently thanking Kira for her expert touch. The diversions were beginning, right on schedule. They re-entered the command center to find it in a state of controlled chaos. Officers rushed about, barking orders and poring over data screens. Das the commander called, waving him over. We're detecting some strange anomalies in our systems. Given what you've told us about these new human weapons, we can't rule out the possibility of an attack. I need you to go over every detail of your encounter again. Leave nothing out, Das nodded, launching into his story once more. As he spoke, he watched the commanders growing more agitated, more paranoid. Seeds of fear were being planted, just as Sarah had predicted. Suddenly, a massive tremor shook the station. Alarms screamed and emergency lights flashed. Report, the commander bellowed. Sir, a frantic officer responded, we're detecting a critical instability in the main reactor. Systems are going haywire. Weapons, navigation, everything's shutting down. Just felt a mix of triumph and terror. They'd done it. The shipyard was crippled, but now came the most dangerous part of all, the escape. As if on cue, the lights in the command center flickered and died, plunging the room into darkness. Das felt a hand grasp his arm. Sarah, he knew instinctively, 
Now, she whispered urgently, we have to move. In the confusion and darkness, they slipped away, racing through corridors lit only by emergency lighting. Das could hear shouts and running footsteps all around them. The shuttle's been compromised, Sarah panted as they ran. We need to find another way out. Das's mind raced. Then he had an idea. The prototype ship, he said. The one with the experimental FTL drive. It's in Docking Bay 12, Sarah nodded, changing direction. They rounded a corner and nearly collided with a group of security officers. Before Das could react, Whisper materialized from the shadows, its form rippling with darkness. The officers crumpled to the ground, unconscious. Nice timing, Sarah said. Whisper merely nodded before fading back into invisibility. They reached Docking Bay 12 to find Kira and Grax already there, fighting off a group of technicians. With Das's access codes and Sarah's piloting skills, they managed to board the prototype ship and seal the airlock. As Sarah fired up the engines, Das looked out the viewscreen at the chaos they were leaving behind. Fires burned in parts of the shipyard, and ships floated aimlessly. Their navigation systems scrambled. And it's done, he said softly, a mix of emotions churning within him. Sarah's hand found his, squeezing gently. You did the right thing, Das. Remember that. As the prototype ship shot away from the crippled shipyard, its experimental FTL drive engaging, Das couldn't help but wonder what would happen now. Had they really prevented a war or merely postponed it? And where did he go from here now that he could never return home? The stars streaked by outside, carrying them into an uncertain future. But whatever lay ahead, Das knew one thing for certain. His life and the fate of the galaxy would never be the same again. The prototype ship hurtled through space, its experimental FTL drive humming with barely contained power. Inside the cramped cockpit, the unlikely team of saboteurs sat in tense silence, each lost in their own thoughts. Das stared out the view screen, watching unfamiliar star systems blur past. The reality of what they had just done was starting to sink in. He had betrayed his people, crippled their greatest military asset, and fled with a group of aliens he barely knew. There was no going back now. Sarah's voice broke the silence. We're being pursued. Three, no, four ships. Looks like they managed to get some of their systems back online faster than we anticipated. Kira leaned over the sensor readouts, her fur bristling with concern. Those are Huntress-class interceptors, fast and heavily armed, we can't outrun them forever, even with this fancy drive. Then we fight, Grax rumbled, his stony hands clenching into fists. No, Das said, surprising himself with the firmness in his voice. No more violence. There has to be another way. Sarah glanced at him, a mix of respect and worry in her eyes. I'm open to suggestions. We've got maybe ten minutes before they're in weapons range. Das closed his eyes, forcing himself to think. He knew those ships, knew their weaknesses. An idea began to form in his mind. The Huntress Interceptors, he said slowly. They have a blind spot in their sensor array. A small gap in coverage directly above the engine housing. If we could get close enough, we could slip past them undetected, Sarah finished, a grin spreading across her face. Das, you're a genius. A risky maneuver. Whisper's voice drifted from the shadows, but perhaps our only option. Sarah's hands flew over the controls, adjusting their course. All right, people, this is going to get bumpy. Strap in and hold on tight. The ship lurched as Sarah cut the FTL drive, dropping them back into normal space. The pursuing interceptors appeared on their sensors, closing fast. Here we go, Sarah muttered her face a mask of concentration. She rolled the ship, diving towards the lead interceptor. Weapons fire streaked past them, missing by mere meters. Das felt his hearts racing as they plummeted towards what looked like certain death. At the last possible second, Sarah pulled up, skimming the surface of the interceptor's hull. For a breathless moment, they were so close, Das could see individual rivets on the enemy ship's armor plating. Then they were past, 
Slipping into the sensor blind spot Das had identified, Sarah immediately re-engaged the FTL drive, and the stars once again blurred into streaks of light. A collective sigh of relief filled the cockpit. Kira let out a whoop of triumph, while Grax simply nodded in approval. Nice flying, Das said to Sarah, his voice filled with newfound respect. She flashed him a quick smile. Nice intel. We make a good team. As the adrenaline of their escape faded, a heavy silence fell over the group. The reality of their situation began to set in. So, Kira said, her tail twitching nervously, what now? It was the question they were all thinking but had been afraid to ask. Their mission was accomplished, but at what cost? And where did they go from here? Sarah leaned back in her seat, her expression thoughtful. We've bought ourselves some time, but we're not out of the woods yet. Das's people will be out for blood, and it won't take them long to figure out what really happened. We need a safe haven, Whisper's ethereal voice suggested, somewhere to regroup and plan our next move. Das felt all eyes turn to him. He shifted uncomfortably under their gaze. What? You're our expert on this part of space, Sarah said gently. Any ideas where we might find sanctuary? Das frowned, considering. His people had made many enemies over the years with their raids and aggressive expansion, but they had also made a few allies. There's a system, he said slowly, about three parsecs from here. Planet called Nexus. It's a trading hub. Neutral ground for dozens of species. My people have an arrangement with the local government. They might be willing to offer us protection, at least temporarily, Sarah nodded. It's worth a shot. Set a course for Nexus. As the ship changed direction, Das found himself lost in thought. He had spent his entire life among his own kind, never questioning their ways or their place in the galaxy. Now, surrounded by these diverse beings from across time and space, he was seeing everything in a new light. Hey! Sarah's voice broke into his reverie. You okay? Das turned to find her watching him with concern. He tried to smile, but it felt forced. I'm fine. It's just a lot to process. Sarah's expression softened. I know. Believe me. I know exactly how you feel. The first time I learned about the future, about the role I was meant to play, it was overwhelming. How do you deal with it? Das asked, genuinely curious. The weight of knowing what's at stake. Sarah was quiet for a moment, her gaze distant. You focus on what's in front of you. Take it one day at a time. And you remember that you're not alone. She reached out, placing a hand on Das's arm. You did a brave thing back there, Das. A difficult thing. But it was the right thing. Don't forget that. Das nodded, feeling a warmth spread through him at her words. For the first time since this wild adventure began, he felt like he truly belonged. The moment was interrupted by a soft chime from the ship's computer. We're approaching the Nexus system, Kira announced. As they dropped out of FTL, a stunning sight greeted them. The planet Nexus hung in space before them, a swirling marble of blues, greens, and purples. But it was what surrounded the planet that took Das's breath away. A vast network of space stations and docking platforms orbited Nexus, connected by shimmering energy tethers. Ships of all shapes and sizes darted between the structures, a cosmic dance of commerce and culture. Wow! Grax rumbled, even his stony features registering awe. Welcome to Nexus, Das said, a hint of pride in his voice. The crossroads of the galaxy. As they approached the outermost docking ring, a communications channel crackled to life. Unidentified vessel. This is Nexus Control. Please state your business and transmit docking credentials. Das leaned forward, speaking clearly. Nexus Control. This is Das of the... He hesitated, glancing at his companions, then continued, of the Ghost Walker. We seek sanctuary under the Neutral Zone Accords. Authorization code Sigma 9 Delta 7. There was a long pause. Das held his breath acutely aware of the weapons platforms tracking their approach. Finally, the controller's voice returned. Authorization code accepted Ghostwalker. 
You are cleared for docking at Platform 17. Be advised, your vessel will be impounded pending review of your sanctuary request. Welcome to Nexus. As Sarah guided their ship towards the assigned docking platform, Das felt a mix of relief and apprehension. They had made it this far, but he knew the real challenges were just beginning. All right, team, Sarah said as the docking clamps engaged. We're not out of danger yet. Stick together, stay alert, and let Das do the talking. We don't know who we can trust here. They disembarked, stepping onto the bustling docking platform. Das was immediately struck by the diversity of life around them. Beings from a hundred different worlds moved about their business, the air filled with a cacophony of languages and the scents of exotic foods. A tall, insectoid being approached, its mandibles clicking softly. I am Administrator Zix, it said in accented but understandable common. I understand you seek sanctuary. Follow me, please. The Council will hear your case immediately. As they followed Zix through winding corridors and vast, open plazas, Das couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. He caught glimpses of shadowy figures in the crowds, beings that seemed to be paying just a little too much attention to their group. Sarah, he whispered, I think we're being followed. She nodded almost imperceptibly. I know. Stay calm. We knew this wouldn't be easy. They were led into a grand chamber, its walls adorned with the flags and symbols of dozens of species. A semi-circular table dominated the room, behind which sat seven beings of wildly different appearances. Administrator Zix took its place at the center of the table. Esteemed members of the Council, I present the crew of the vessel Ghostwalker. They seek sanctuary under the Neutral Zone Accords. Das of Zix paused. Mandibles twitching in what might have been confusion. Das will present their case. Das stepped forward, his heart's pounding. He looked at the stern faces of the council members, then back at his companions. Sarah gave him an encouraging nod. Taking a deep breath, Das began to speak. Honored council, I come before you with a tale of grave importance. A tale of impending war, of terrible weapons, and of a desperate act to prevent galactic catastrophe. As Das poured out their story, carefully omitting certain details and emphasizing others, he could see the council members' expressions changing. Some looked skeptical, others concerned, and a few, a few looked almost afraid. What Das didn't know, couldn't know, was that his words were setting in motion events that would reshape the galaxy in ways none of them could have imagined. The die was cast, and the true test of their unlikely alliance was about to begin. Das finished his testimony, his voice hoarse from speaking. The council chamber had fallen into a hushed silence, the weight of his words hanging heavy in the air. He could feel the eyes of every being in the room upon him, judging, evaluating, deciding their fate. Administrator Zix was the first to break the silence, its mandibles clicking rapidly in what Das recognized as agitation. These are grave accusations. Das of the Ghost Walker. You speak of impending war, of terrible weapons, of actions that could be considered acts of terrorism against your own people. The Council must deliberate on this matter carefully. A reptilian counselor leaned forward, its scales shimmering in the chamber's soft light. If what you say is true, the balance of power in this sector could shift dramatically. We must consider the implications for Nexus and its people. Implications, a avian counselor squawked indignantly. If this story is to be believed, we're talking about the potential annihilation of entire species. We cannot stand idly by... The chamber erupted into heated debate. Das stepped back, rejoining his companions. Sarah placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You did well, she whispered. Now we wait. The deliberations stretched on for what felt like hours. Das found himself studying the faces of his newfound allies. Kira's tail twitched nervously, her eyes darting around the room as if searching for escape routes. Grax stood motionless, his stony visage unreadable, Whisper had all but disappeared, a faint shimmer in the air, the only indication of its presence. And Sarah. Sarah watched the council with an intensity that made Das wonder, not for the first time, 
just how many times she had been in situations like this before. Finally, Administrator Zix raised a limb for silence. The chamber fell quiet once more. After careful consideration, Zix began, its voice carrying the weight of authority. The Council has reached a decision. While we cannot independently verify all aspects of your story, the potential threat you describe is too great to ignore. Nexus will grant you temporary sanctuary under strict conditions. Das felt a wave of relief wash over him, but Zix wasn't finished. We, however, we must also consider the diplomatic ramifications of harboring you. To that end, we will be sending a delegation to your homeworld to investigate these claims and attempt to open a dialogue. Until their return, you and your companions will remain under house arrest in a secure facility. Sarah stepped forward, her voice firm. With all due respect, Administrator, and we don't have time for diplomatic niceties. Every moment we delay is a moment we use to prevent unnecessary conflict, Zix interrupted. You've done your part, Sarah Connor. Now let us do ours. Das saw Sarah's jaw clench, but she nodded curtly. He knew she was used to taking action, to fighting against seemingly impossible odds. Waiting and trusting in bureaucracy must be torture for her. As they were led from the chamber by a contingent of Nexus security officers, Das couldn't shake the feeling that they had set something in motion that was rapidly spiraling out of their control. Their secure facility turned out to be a luxurious apartment in one of Nexus's upper levels, with a breathtaking view of the planet below and the bustling space lanes above. Despite the comfort, Das felt like a prisoner. Days passed in a blur of debriefings, medical examinations, and long periods of anxious waiting. They were kept informed of developments through carefully sanitized news broadcasts, but Das could read between the lines. Tensions were rising across the sector. His people, predictably, were denying everything and demanding his extradition. Other species were choosing sides, old alliances straining under the weight of the accusations. It was on the fifth day of their confinement that everything changed. They were gathered in the apartment's common area, picking at a meal none of them had much appetite for when the view screen on the wall suddenly came to life. The face that appeared made Das's blood run cold. It was Colonel Stryker, the scarred human leader of the ghosts who had attacked Das's crew in the bar. But how was that possible? Stryker wasn't supposed to exist in this timeline yet. Greetings, citizens of the galaxy, Stryker's voice boomed, his eyes burning with fanatical intensity. I am Colonel John Stryker of Earth's Special Temporal Operations Command. I come to you today with a warning and an ultimatum. Sarah was on her feet in an instant, her face pale. This is all wrong, she whispered. He shouldn't be here, shouldn't have this kind of power yet. Stryker continued, oblivious to the chaos he was causing in one particular apartment on Nexus. For too long, humanity has been the victim of alien aggression and exploitation. The recent attack on our world was the last straw. We will no longer stand idly by while our people suffer. Images flashed across the screen, the aftermath of Das's crew's raid on Earth, scenes of destruction and panic. Das felt a pang of guilt even though he knew his actions had ultimately been in service of preventing a greater catastrophe. Would to the species known as the Kozar, Stryker said using the name of Das's people, you have 24 standard hours to surrender those responsible for the attack on Earth and to begin immediate disarmament of your military forces. Failure to comply will result in consequences beyond your imagination. The screen split showing a massive ship unlike anything Das had ever seen. It was easily ten times the size of the largest Kozar dreadnought, bristling with weapons that pulsed with ominous energy. This is the TSV Retribution, Stryker declared, a note of pride in his voice, the first of Earth's new judgment-class warships. Its power is beyond anything your primitive minds can comprehend, and we have an entire fleet just like it, ready to rain fire upon any who stand in our way. Das felt the blood drain from his face. 
This was exactly the kind of escalation they had been trying to prevent. Somehow, their actions had accelerated the timeline, pushed humanity into a more aggressive stance even faster than before. Stryker's eyes seemed to bore into the camera. And to the traitors who think they can hide on Nexus, you know who you are. Know that there is nowhere in this galaxy you can run where we won't find you. Your misguided attempt to protect the aliens has only hastened their doom. The transmission cut off abruptly, leaving the room in stunned silence. How? Das finally managed to croak out. How is this possible? You said this technology, this striker, wasn't supposed to exist for years. Sarah was pacing the room, her mind clearly racing. Something's changed. Our actions, the information you provided about the shipyard. We must have inadvertently given them the push they needed to accelerate their plans, Kira hissed softly. So we've made things worse instead of better. Not necessarily, Whisper's voice drifted from a corner. We've changed the timeline, yes, but that also means the future is no longer set. We have a chance to influence events, to steer things in a better direction. Grax rumbled in agreement. We know what's coming now. We can prepare can warn others. Das felt a renewed sense of purpose flooding through him. We have to get out of here, he said firmly. We have to stop this before it's too late. Sarah smiled grimly. Now you're talking my language, but how do we get past our guards and off this station? As if in answer to her question, the door to their apartment slid open. Administrator Zick stood there, flanked by several armed guards. Uh, it seems, Zick said, its mandibles clicking rapidly, that the situation has escalated beyond our ability to control through diplomatic means. The Council has reconvened and reached a new decision. Daz held his breath, expecting the worst, but Zick surprised him. We are lifting your house arrest. Moreover, we are providing you with a ship and resources. Your mission should you choose to accept it, is to find a way to de-escalate this conflict before it engulfs the entire sector. Sarah stepped forward, her eyes blazing with determination. We accept, but we'll need access to all the intelligence you have on Earth's new capabilities and on the current political situation in the sector. Zix nodded. You'll have it. But understand this. While we're giving you the freedom to act, Nexus cannot officially sanction your actions. If you're caught, we will disavow any knowledge of your mission. Das looked at his companions, seeing the same mix of fear and resolve in their eyes that he felt in his hearts. They were being asked to save the galaxy, to prevent a war that threatened to destroy everything. It was a monumental task, perhaps an impossible one. But as he met Sarah's gaze, saw the unwavering determination there, Das knew they had to try, whatever the cost. Whatever the danger, they had to find a way to stop Colonel Stryker and prevent the apocalyptic future that loomed before them. As they followed Zix out of the apartment and towards an uncertain future, Das couldn't help but feel a strange sense of excitement mixed with his fear. For the first time in his life, he was part of something truly important, truly meaningful. The fate of the galaxy now rested in their hands, and Das was determined not to let it slip away. The sleek, unmarked ship cut through the darkness of space, its advanced stealth systems rendering it nearly invisible to conventional sensors. In the cockpit, Das sat beside Sarah, his large fingers dancing over the unfamiliar controls as he familiarized himself with the vessel's capabilities. This ship is incredible, he murmured, more to himself than to Sarah. The technology. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Sarah nodded, her eyes fixed on the navigational display. Nexus didn't hold back. They must really be scared of what's coming. In the ship's small common area, the rest of the team pored over the intelligence files provided by Administrator Zix. Star charts, political briefings, and technical readouts on Earth's new military capabilities scrolled across multiple screens. Kira's tail swished in agitation as she absorbed the information. This doesn't make sense, she said, frustration evident in her voice. How could Earth have advanced so quickly? Even with the intel from Das's people, this level of technological leap is unprecedented. 
Whisper's shadowy form coalesced near one of the screens. Perhaps they had help, the ethereal being suggested. An outside influence accelerating their progress, Grax rumbled thoughtfully. You mean like how we tried to prevent the war by interfering? Someone else could be pushing for the opposite outcome. The implications of that possibility hung heavy in the air. If there were other time travelers involved, other factions manipulating events, their mission had just become infinitely more complex. Sarah's voice came over the ship's intercom. We're approaching the coordinates Zix gave us. Everyone to the cockpit. You need to see this. As the team assembled, a massive space station came into view. It hung in the void like a metallic spider its spindly arms stretching out in all directions, ships of various sizes and configurations docked at its extremities, a constant flow of traffic coming and going. Welcome to the hub, Sarah said, her voice tinged with awe. The largest black market in this sector of the galaxy. If there's information to be had about what's really going on, we'll find it here. Das felt a mixture of excitement and apprehension, He'd heard whispered stories of the hub throughout his life, but he'd never imagined he'd actually set foot in the infamous station. How do we get in? Surely a place like this has tight security, Sarah grinned, a mischievous glint in her eye. Leave that to me. I've got a contact here. Someone who owes me a favor from, well, from a future that hopefully won't happen now. As they approached one of the smaller, more discreet docking bays, Sarah opened the encrypted communication channel. Artemis Actual. This is Phoenix. Calling in that marker. We need quiet entry and a secure meeting place. There was a moment of static. Then a gruff voice responded, Phoenix, I'll be damned. Didn't expect to hear from you in this timeline. All right, you're cleared for Bay 37. I'll meet you there. Come armed. Things have been tense lately. The docking procedure went smoothly, and as the airlock cycled open, they were met by a tall, cybernetically enhanced human. His left eye glowed with a soft blue light, and his right arm was entirely mechanical. Sarah Connor, he said, his organic eye widening in surprise. You look younger than I remember. Sarah stepped forward, clasping the man's flesh and blood hand. It's good to see you, Marcus. We've got a lot to talk about. Marcus nodded, his cybernetic eye scanning the rest of the team. Interesting crew you've assembled. Come on, let's get you somewhere safe. The station's crawling with Earth intelligence operatives lately. As they followed Marcus through the hub's winding corridors, Das was overwhelmed by the sensory assault. Beings from across the galaxy haggled in a hundred different languages, the air thick with the scents of exotic foods and mechanical oil. Holographic advertisements flickered on every surface, promising everything from illegal weapons to forbidden pleasures. They finally arrived at what appeared to be a run-down bar. Marcus ushered them inside, leading them to a back room hidden behind a holographic wall. All right, he said once they were all settled. What kind of trouble are you in this time, Sarah? Sarah quickly brought Marcus up to speed on their situation. As she spoke, Das watched the cybernetic human's expression grow increasingly grave. Indeed, this is worse than I thought, Marcus said when she had finished. You're right that Earth's advancement has been unnaturally quick, but it's not just technology. There's been a shift in the political landscape too. Hardliners like Stryker have been gaining power, pushing for aggressive expansion. Kira leaned forward, her ears twitching. Do you know anything about this Judgment Class warship? Is it as powerful as Stryker claims? Marcus's cybernetic eye pulsed. I've seen the specs. If anything, Stryker was understating its capabilities. That ship could take on an entire fleet and come out on top. Das felt his heart sink. Then how can we possibly stop this? We're just a handful of... of misfits against the might of an entire militarized Earth. Sarah's hand found his shoulder, squeezing gently, the same way we always do. We find their weakness and we exploit it, Marcus nodded approvingly, and I think I might know where to start. There's a rumor going around the hub about a secret Earth research facility. Supposedly, it's where they're developing the core technology for these new warships. 
Grax's rocky form shifted, pebbles cascading to the floor. If we could sabotage this facility, we could cripple their entire war effort, Whisper finished, its shadowy form rippling with excitement. Marcus held up a hand. Not so fast. This place is supposed to be a fortress. Highest level security. Unknown location. Getting in would be nearly impossible. Sarah's eyes gleamed with determination. Nearly impossible is our specialty. What else can you tell us? As Marcus began to detail what little he knew about the facility, Das found himself studying his companions. He saw the same fire in their eyes that he felt growing within himself. They were an unlikely group. A time-traveling human, a feline tech expert, a being of living stone, a creature of shadow, and himself, a former pirate turned galactic savior. Yet somehow, against all odds, they had come together. And now, they were all that stood between the galaxy and all-out war. Das made a decision in that moment. Whatever it took, whatever the cost, he would see this through. He owed it to his people, to the galaxy, and to these strange beings he had come to think of as friends. Marcus's voice cut through Das's thoughts. There's one more thing you should know. The facility is rumored to be run by someone calling themselves the Architect. No one knows who they really are, but they're said to be the mastermind behind Earth's technological leap. Sarah's eyes narrowed. The Architect? Why does that sound familiar? Before she could elaborate, alarms began blaring throughout the station. Marcus's cybernetic eye pulsed rapidly. We've got trouble. Earth forces are conducting a sweep of the station. They must have detected your ship. We need to leave, Whisper's voice was urgent. Now, Marcus nodded. I can get you to your ship, but you'll have to fight your way out. Are you ready for this? Das looked at his companions, saw the resolve in their faces. He thought of everything they had been through, everything that was at stake. His hand went to the weapon at his side, and he felt a calm determination settle over him. We're ready he said, surprising himself with the strength in his voice. Sarah grinned fiercely. Then let's go save the galaxy. As they rushed out of the hidden room and into the chaos of the hub, Das felt a strange sense of exhilaration. They were outnumbered, outgunned, and facing seemingly impossible odds. But they had something their enemies didn't, a cause worth fighting for. And each other? And Das was beginning to believe that might just be enough. The corridors of the hub had transformed into a battlefield. Earth troops, in sleek, powered armor, clashed with the station's security forces and various criminal elements. Energy weapons sizzled through the air, leaving scorch marks on walls and unfortunate bystanders alike. Marcus led them through back alleys and secret passages, his intimate knowledge of the station proving invaluable. But their luck couldn't hold forever. As they rounded a corner, they found themselves face to face with a squad of Earth soldiers. For a frozen moment, both groups stared at each other in surprise. Then all hell broke loose. The air crackled with energy as both sides opened fire simultaneously. Das dove for cover behind a fallen piece of debris, his heart pounding in his ears. He'd been in fights before, but nothing like this. Sarah moved with practiced efficiency, her weapon spitting fire as she rolled from cover to cover. Grax stood his ground, energy bolts ricocheting off his stony hide as he returned fire with a massive hand cannon. Kira's agility proved invaluable as she leapt and bounded through the battlefield, her claws leaving sparks on metal surfaces as she outmaneuvered the Earth soldiers. Whisper was barely visible a shimmering outline that appeared and disappeared, leaving unconscious enemies in its wake. Das took a deep breath, steeling himself. He couldn't let his newfound friends fight alone. Popping up from his cover, he unleashed a barrage from his own weapon, the unfamiliar gun bucking in his hands. To his surprise, his shots found their mark. Two Earth soldiers went down, their armor smoking from precise hits to weak points. Das hadn't even realized he'd been aiming for. Nice shooting, Sarah called out, flashing him a quick grin before returning her attention to the battle. 
Marcus was a whirlwind of cybernetic enhancement and combat experience. His mechanical arm transformed into a multi-barreled weapon, laying down suppressing fire as he coordinated their retreat. And this way, he shouted, gesturing towards a narrow corridor, there's a maintenance shaft that leads directly to your docking bay. They fell back in good order, covering each other's movements. Das found himself working in seamless coordination with his teammates, as if they'd been fighting together for years instead of days. As they reached the entrance to the maintenance shaft, a new sound cut through the chaos of battle. A deep, resonant hum that Das felt in his bones. Incoming, Kira yelled, her sensitive ears twitching. Something big! The wall at the end of the corridor exploded inward, showering them with debris. Through the dust and smoke strode a massive figure, easily three times the size of a normal human. Its powered armor was like nothing Das had ever seen, bristling with weapons and emanating an aura of raw power. Judgment Trooper! Marcus spat, his voice filled with fear and awe. They're not supposed to be deployed yet! The Judgment Trooper's helmet swiveled towards them, its featureless faceplate somehow radiating menace. When it spoke, its voice was a bone-shaking rumble. Surrender, fugitives. Resistance is futile. Sarah's response was a burst of fire aimed at the trooper's head. The energy bolts splashed harmlessly off an invisible energy shield. Udu go, she shouted to the others. Get to the ship. I'll hold it off. Das felt a moment of panic. They couldn't leave Sarah behind. But before he could protest, he felt Grax's stony hand on his shoulder, pulling him towards the maintenance shaft. She knows what she's doing, the rock being rumbled. Uh, we must trust her. With a last, anguished look at Sarah, facing down the terrifying judgment trooper, Das allowed himself to be led into the narrow shaft. The sounds of intense combat echoed behind them as they crawled through the claustrophobic space. After what felt like an eternity, they emerged into their docking bay. Their ship sat there, untouched and ready for launch. I we can't leave without Sarah, Das insisted as the others rushed towards the ship. As if in answer to his words, an explosion rocked the station. A figure came flying through the air, smashing into a stack of cargo containers. It was Sarah, her clothing singed and her face streaked with blood, but very much alive. Go, 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 she yelled, staggering to her feet. The wall behind her crumbled and the Judgment Trooper stepped through, its armor scratched and smoking but still terrifyingly functional. They all scrambled aboard the ship, Das and Grax providing covering fire as the others prepped for launch. The docking clamps disengaged with a metallic shriek, and they were airborne just as the Judgment Trooper reached for them. Sarah threw herself into the pilot's seat, her hands flying over the controls. The ship shot out of the docking bay like a cork from a bottle, narrowly avoiding a massive energy blast from the trooper's shoulder-mounted cannon. Hang on, Sarah yelled. This is going to get bumpy. The hub's defense systems came to life, energy beams and missile launchers tracking their flight. Sarah's piloting skills were put to the test as she wove through the barrage, the ship shuddering with each near miss. Das strapped himself into the co-pilot's seat, trying to make sense of the chaotic sensor readings. We've got company, he called out. Earth interceptors closing fast. Sarah's face was a mask of concentration. Kira, I need everything you can give me from the engines. Whisper, get on those electronic countermeasures. Das, weapons are yours. Let's show these Earth boys what we can do. As they broke free of the hub's gravity well, the real battle began. Earth's interceptors were fast and agile, their pilots clearly well-trained, but they hadn't counted on the unique abilities of Sarah's misfit crew. Das found himself operating the ship's weapons with an instinctive skill he never knew he possessed. Perhaps it was the adrenaline, or maybe some hidden potential unlocked by the stress of combat. Whatever the reason... His shots found their marks with uncanny accuracy. Kira's technical wizardry coaxed every ounce of power from the engines, allowing them to perform maneuvers that should have been impossible. Whisper's mastery of electronic warfare left the Earth pilots confused and disoriented. Their targeting systems rendered useless. But it wasn't enough. For every interceptor they took out, 
two more seemed to take its place. They were being herded, Das realized with growing dread, herded towards... Oh no, Sarah breathed, her face paling, looming before them, filling the viewscreen with its ominous bulk, was the TSV Retribution. Colonel Stryker's Judgment Class warship was even more terrifying up close, its weapon ports glowing with barely contained energy. A transmission crackled through their comms. Colonel Stryker's scarred face appeared on the screen, his eyes burning with fanatical intensity. Did you really think you could escape? he sneered. Your pathetic attempt at rebellion ends here. Surrender now, and I may show mercy. Das looked at Sarah, saw the wheels turning behind her eyes. She was formulating a plan, he realized. But what could they possibly do against a ship of that size and power? Stryker, Sarah said, her voice steady despite the dire situation. You're making a mistake. This war you're trying to start, it will be the end of humanity, not its salvation. Stryker's laugh was cold and mirthless. You understand nothing. Humanity's destiny is to rule the stars, to bring order to a chaotic galaxy, and I will be the one to lead us to that glorious future, even if it means the deaths of billions. Das found himself speaking up, surprising everyone, including himself. Is that truly the legacy you want for your species? For a moment, something flickered in Stryker's eyes, doubt, regret, but it was gone as quickly as it appeared, replaced by steel determination. Enough talk, Stryker growled. You had your chance. Now, you'll witness the true power of the Judgment Class warship. Let your death serve as a warning to all who would oppose Earth's manifest destiny. The transmission cut off. On the view screen, they could see the Retribution's main weapon powering up, a ball of energy growing at its focal point. Sarah... Kira's voice was tense. Whatever you're planning, now would be a good time. Sarah's hands tightened on the controls. Her eyes met Das's, and he saw in them a mix of fear, determination, and something else. Trust, Das, she said quietly. Remember that blind spot you told us about, the one on the Huntress-class interceptors? Das nodded, not understanding where she was going with this. Well, Sarah continued, a ghost of a smile touching her lips. Let's hope these Judgment Class ships have something similar. Because we're about to do something incredibly stupid. Before Das could ask what she meant, Sarah threw the ship into a dive, aiming straight for the Retribution's immense bulk. Das's hearts leapt into his throat as they plummeted towards what looked like certain doom. But he trusted Sarah. Whatever crazy plan she had, he would see it through with her. They all would. As the Retribution's massive form filled their view, blocking out the stars themselves, Das sent a silent prayer to whatever cosmic forces might be listening. They had come too far, fought too hard, to fail now. Whatever happened next would determine not just their fate, but the fate of the entire galaxy. The Retribution loomed before them, a behemoth of metal and energy that seemed to devour the very light around it. Das felt his hearts racing as Sarah piloted their comparatively tiny ship directly towards the massive warship's underbelly. Sarah, he said, his voice tight with tension, what exactly are we looking for? Her eyes never left the viewscreen as she responded, anything that looks like a weak point, a sensor blind spot, a gap in the armor plating, hell, even a garbage chute. We just need a way in. As they drew closer, the Retribution's point defense systems came to life, filling space with a deadly web of energy beams and projectiles. Sarah's piloting skills were pushed to their absolute limits as she wove through the barrage, the ship shuddering with each near miss. There, Kira suddenly shouted, her keen eyes spotting something the others had missed, between those two weapon emplacements. There's a small maintenance hatch. Das saw it too. A tiny access point, barely large enough for their ship to squeeze through. It was a one in a million shot, but it was their only chance. Brace for impact, Sarah yelled as she aimed straight for the hatch. The next few moments were a chaos of screeching metal and flashing emergency lights as their ship scraped through the narrow opening. Sparks flew as paint and hull plating were stripped away, but somehow 
Miraculously, they made it through. They found themselves in a cavernous maintenance bay, alarms blaring all around them. Sarah brought the ship to a rough landing, the deck plates screeching in protest. Everyone out, she commanded. We don't have much time before they flood this area with troops. As they disembarked, Das couldn't help but marvel at the sheer scale of the Retribution's interior. Everything was oversized, built to intimidate as much as to function. What's the plan now? Grax rumbled, his rocky hands clenching and unclenching in anticipation of the fight to come. Sarah's eyes gleamed with determination. Do we find the bridge, we confront Stryker, and we end this war before it can truly begin? And how exactly do we do that? Whisper's ethereal voice asked. A grim smile played across Sarah's lips. We give him a choice. Stand down, or we blow this ship to kingdom come. Das blinked in surprise. But we don't have the firepower to destroy a ship this size. No, Sarah agreed. But we have something better. Kira, show them what you've been working on. The feline tech expert produced a small, innocuous-looking device from her pack. I call it the Chaos Engine, she said, a note of pride in her voice. It's a quantum disruption bomb. Once activated, it will create a cascading failure in any advanced technology within its radius, including the Retribution's power core, Das finished, his eyes widening in understanding. Sarah nodded. Exactly. We get to the bridge. We give Stryker his ultimatum. If he refuses, we activate the Chaos Engine and take this whole ship down. It was a desperate plan, borderline suicidal. But as Das looked at his companions, he saw the same resolve in their eyes that he felt in his hearts. They had come too far to turn back now. Let's do this, he said, drawing his weapon. They moved through the Retribution's corridors like ghosts, Whisper's abilities, allowing them to avoid most of the crew. When confrontations were unavoidable, they struck hard and fast, leaving stunned or unconscious enemies in their wake. As they neared the bridge, resistance stiffened. They found themselves pinned down in a wide corridor, energy bolts sizzling past their heads as Earth troops advanced on their position. We're running out of time! Sarah shouted over the din of battle. We need to get through. Das peered around his cover, assessing the situation. The corridor ahead was a killing field, with no way to advance without being cut down. Unless an idea struck him, crazy and dangerous, but possibly their only chance. Grax! he called out. I need you to throw me. The rock being looked at him in confusion. Throw you! Where? Das pointed to a maintenance hatch in the ceiling, just barely visible above the earth troops. Position. Up there? I can flank them. Give you the opening you need. Grax nodded, understanding dawning in his crystalline eyes. Without another word, he grabbed Das and turned with a mighty heave, sent him sailing through the air. Time seemed to slow as Das flew over the heads of the stunned earth soldiers. He saw their eyes widen in shock, their weapons tracking upwards too slowly. With a grunt of effort, he grabbed the maintenance hatch, wrenching it open and pulling himself inside. From his new vantage point, Das had a perfect angle on the Earth troops. His shots rained down on them from above, sowing confusion and panic in their ranks. In the chaos, Sarah and the others seized their chance, charging forward and breaking through the enemy line. Das dropped down to rejoin his companions, his heart pounding with exhilaration. Sarah clapped him on the shoulder, a fierce grin on her face. Quick thinking, she said. Now let's finish this. They burst onto the bridge in a flurry of action, catching the crew completely off guard. Within moments, they had control of the room, with only Colonel Stryker himself remaining defiant. God, you fools! Stryker snarled, his scarred face contorted with rage. Do you have any idea what you're interfering with? The destiny of humanity is at stake. Sarah stepped forward, her weapon trained on Stryker's chest. The only thing at stake here is your ego, Colonel. This war you're trying to start, it will be the end of humanity, not its salvation. Stryker's laugh was cold and bitter. You understand nothing. I've seen the future, Connor. I know what's coming. This is the only way to ensure our survival. 
You're wrong, Das found himself saying, stepping up beside Sarah. I've seen what happens when species give in to fear and aggression. It leads only to destruction. For a moment, something flickered in Stryker's eyes, doubt, regret, but it was quickly replaced by steely determination. I will not be swayed by the words of aliens and traitors, he growled. Sarah's voice was hard as she laid out their ultimatum. Stand down, Stryker. Call off this war, or we activate the chaos engine and take this whole ship down. Your choice. Stryker's eyes darted to the device in Kira's hands, then back to Sarah. For a long, tense moment, the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. Then, with a speed that belied his size, Stryker lunged for a control panel. If I'm going down, he roared, I'm taking you all with me. Everything happened at once. Das saw Stryker's hand reaching for what could only be a self-destruct button. He saw Sarah's finger tightening on her trigger, and he saw, with sudden clarity, a chance to change everything. Without conscious thought, Das threw himself forward. He collided with Stryker just as the colonel's hand came down on the panel. There was a blinding flash of energy, a sensation of falling, and then darkness. Daz awoke to the sound of gentle beeping and the sterile smell of a medical bay. As his eyes fluttered open, he saw Sarah sitting by his bedside, her face etched with worry and relief. Welcome back, she said softly. Oh, do you had us scared for a while there. Das tried to sit up, wincing at the pain that shot through his body. What, what happened? The retribution. Striker. Sarah's hand found his, squeezing gently. You did it, Das. You saved us all. When you tackled Striker, you knocked him into the control panel. Instead of activating the self-destruct, he accidentally initiated an emergency shutdown of all systems. Das blinked trying to process this information, and the war. A small smile touched Sarah's lips, averted for now. With the retribution disabled and Stryker in custody, the more moderate factions on Earth have regained control. They're open to diplomatic discussions with other species. Relief washed over Das, so intense it left him feeling weak. They had done it. Against all odds, they had prevented the catastrophic future Sarah had warned them about. As if reading his thoughts, Sarah continued, It's not over, of course. There's still a lot of work to be done. But we've bought ourselves time, a chance to build a better future. Das nodded, feeling a mix of exhaustion and determination. And what happens now? he asked. Sarah's eyes sparkled with a hint of adventure. Well, that's up to us, isn't it? The galaxy's a big place, with plenty of wrongs to right and mysteries to solve. I'd say we make a pretty good team. What do you think? Ready for another adventure? Das looked at Sarah. Thinking of all they had been through together, he thought of Kira's brilliant mind, Grax's steadfast strength, Whisper's enigmatic abilities. They were an unlikely group, thrown together by chance and circumstance. But together... They had changed the course of history. A smile spread across Das's face as he squeezed Sarah's hand. Another adventure. With this team, always. As Sarah grinned back at him, Das felt a sense of purpose and belonging he had never known before. Whatever challenges lay ahead, whatever threats emerged from the shadows of time and space, they would face them together. For Das, once a lowly crew member on a pirate ship, had found his true calling. With his newfound family at his side, he was ready to take on the universe itself. The galaxy would never be the same, and neither would Das. As the stars wheeled overhead and new horizons beckoned, Das knew that their greatest adventures were still to come, and he couldn't wait to see what the future held.